Good morning, everyone. My name is Scott Drennan. I'm the VP of Innovation for Bell. And wow, we are so excited to be here at CES 2020 for the third year in a row. If you remember back with me a little bit, in 2018, we introduced our air taxi cabin. And we wanted to do that at CES to introduce ourselves to new customers, demonstrate our focus on experience, and designing and building from the inside out. Then in 2019, we revealed the vehicle that would transform mobility forevermore in cities like yours and mine, the Bell Nexus. That was a great picture there, and I love that week. It was really exciting. Well, here today, we're here to show you the reality of 2025 with a vehicle like Nexus, but more importantly, a smart city. And we'll talk through all of these things as we go through the presentation. Let's go back to the why, though. Today's cities are overcrowded. The infrastructure burdens and the congestion issues that we live, they're just complicating our lives. We need to do something about it. Our productivity is going down. We have limited life choices due to these restrictions. And we just aren't spending our time like we want to spend our time. I mean, every time I'm stuck in traffic, I know exactly where else I'd rather be. I don't know about you. <laughs> I probably have a list and you have a list too. There's hope though. There's hope on the horizon. And it's today that we want to show you how a modern landscape is evolving into an interconnected mobility ecosystem that involves a vehicle, that involves a cityscape. This ecosystem will have safe, accessible, and sustainable VTOL aircraft like Nexus and like our unmanned logistics support family of vehicle, APT, that will evolve into an interconnected mobility ecosystem and move people, goods, and information across familiar territory, our communities, and sometimes unfamiliar territory. They will exist in smart cities where there's physical infrastructure on the ground and digital infrastructure in the airwaves and where those two items, the physical infrastructure and the digital infrastructure, are perfectly synced together with the vehicle to expand our mobility footprint, to improve our connectedness. Anybody want some more connectedness? I do. We're always looking at our phones instead of each other. And then simplify our movements. Okay, so you may have noticed a few changes as you came through the booth on the Nexus vehicle. And that's true. We've evolved. The design requirements change, we evolve, and we're adding to the Nexus family. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to reveal to you the Nexus 4EX. There she is flying over a community like ours, and you'll notice that there are four ducts. It's an all-electric vehicle, and right now it's in its experimental configuration. So 4EX is four ducts, all-electric, experimental. The requirements have changed and we've evolved. So let's do a little, I call them talk arounds, a little bit, like a walk around of the vehicle. So the first thing that you'll notice is we kept our signature tilting ducted fan design, but there's four now instead of six. And I'm gonna get ahead of you on your question. Is it still as safe? Yes, it is. Because remember the conversation we've been having about redundancy. Redundancy does not equal reliability. Redundancy is a means to reliability, and Bell knows how to do reliability. What else has changed? There's no hump on the back spine of the aircraft. Well, that hump last year was our engine inlet. Today it's gone because Nexus 4EX is all electric. It still has the same payload we talked about last year, four plus one passengers, initially a pilot, Finally, five passengers. It has a different range because when we talked about hybrid, hybrid is a range extender. So 150 miles on the hybrid version, 60 miles on the electric version. We still have the same speed, 150 miles per hour cruise speed. So when you think about this vehicle, think about your customer needs, think about your needs, and think range with hybrid, not so much range with electric, Lower operating costs, though, with electric. 
So this design unlocks the all-electric configuration, but the vehicle will still remain propulsion agnostic. So you'll have a Nexus 4EX, and you'll have a Nexus 4HX, and we will answer our customer requirements wherever they may be. So think maybe intra-city for the electric, and then between cities, intercity for the hybrid. This new mobility option will be safe, accessible, and sustainable. What do I mean by that? I want to talk about that just a little bit. Everyone thinks when you're talking about an aircraft, safety means the aircraft safety. And that's true, and Bell will do that first and foremost. But the other piece of safety that we need to add are flight safety, flight operation safety, and maintenance operational safety. That's the whole story of safe VTOL for everyday average consumers. Accessibility, what does that mean? Well, first, it means affordable. This vehicle can't scale unless it's affordable. We can't offer it to everyday consumers unless it's affordable. And an all-electric configuration does just that. It drives the operating costs down of the vehicle, and it offers more accessibility for more people. But accessibility also means where are the vertiports going to be? How do they integrate into our city? Can I get on with my kids? Can I get on if I have a disability? And the answer to all of that must be yes. Sustainability. So I'm expanding that conversation a little bit with you too. We used to just say quiet. Well, quiet is a part of sustainability. We don't want to create noise pollution in our communities. Nexus 4EX is quiet. The ducts, the smaller rotor diameters, add up to a beautiful sound that mixes into our urban ambient noise. But sustainability also means, is the tech updating? Do I have software connectivity that means something to me today? Is it eco-friendly? And not just, I can stand up here and say, it's operationally green, but what are we asking ourselves and what are we doing with our supply chain that answers questions like, where did the battery material come from? What are we doing it with it after we're done? Where did the motor material come from? What are we doing it with it after we're done? This well to wing. We're not going to shirk from that responsibility by just saying it's operationally clean and we're done. We need to be more holistic and more uh, detailed about that conversation. So thank you for that. I wanted to expand our, we're, our conversation that we've been having over the last couple of years about those three pieces. So we continue to test our technology and our operational scenarios in order to, to have an objective vehicle that gets to the market. We're continuing to learn, and we love learning. So let's talk about where these vehicles launch and land from. The future smart cities will have mobility centers that aren't just airports, subways, train stations, bus stations. They will be urban living spaces that improve your quality of life and bring you more flexible mobility options. They'll have restaurants, retail, and entertainment options mixed into the perfect transit solution. So you'll have scooters, bikes, walkers, subways, trains, buses, and vertical takeoff and landing aircraft now centered around a place that you already want to be. And you'll just know you can get there easily and you can move from there easily as well. So I don't know about you, does that excite you? I mean, I think about times that I've been in traffic and missed a meeting, um, been in traffic and missed an opportunity to pick my kids up from school. My kids have hip hop on six o'clock on Wednesdays and Ilari often calls me and says, can you go get them from hip hop at six o'clock? And I'll say, well, I have to leave at 4.30 then. Well, the problem is if I leave at 4.30 and there's no traffic, then I lost an hour because I'm sitting there waiting for hip hop to end. And then if there is traffic, I'm late. And when you're late for hip hop, they send out the alarm bells, right? So where's the parent? <laughs> you know how that goes. So this changes that. Think about these mobility centers changing your life. Now let's talk about that city where this mobility center will be. Remember, it's the physical infrastructure on the ground and it's the digital infrastructure all around it. We've modeled it for you 
in the next smart, in the Nexus Smart City behind you. So don't forget as you leave today's presentation to interact with the city. There are some tablets along the outside. You can schedule flights yourself in the little Nexus uh, vehicles there. The physical infrastructure is shown and it has right-sized buildings, right-sized power grids, and right-sized transportation infrastructure already built in that interfaces with these air elements. Okay, but working in the all around, in the background, in the airwaves, is Bell's digital backbone. And I'm really proud to announce our second reveal today, which is Eros, our operating system for connected mobility. It's a really big move on Bell's part. You think of us always as a vehicle OEM. Now we're venturing into a software suite that can allow these vehicles to operate like we just described. So what you see here within the smart city, and I've got a great infographic behind me, is a demonstration of fleet management software that is cloud-based, that's a cloud-based master scheduler. And we've created this demand simulation out there so you can see what demand might look like or act like in a future city. So let's take a look at what Eros does. It's got intelligent scheduling, operational visibility, accessible services. So you've got to manage these vehicles and the, and the operations. You need to know what's happening to them because it all links back to safety and the economical efficiency. If you don't know where your battery is, where your vehicle is, uh, in terms of charge, in terms of maintenance cycles, you're not going to make the right decisions to have an efficient system. So you're going to see um, Eros in action out there in the city. You're also going to see our smart city collaborators mentioned throughout the booth. And I want to walk you through those because these are special people that are thinking about a future state for their communities. And it's tough to think about these things because there's no precedence. So it takes capability and it takes courage. You'll see the Frisco Economic Development Corporation out there. Frisco over the last 10 years is the largest growing city in America. It's a place just to the northwest of Dallas. They're gonna have the first vertiport in the DFW area, which is the first launch city for Uber right there in Frisco. In fact, it's up and operational today. Helicopters are using it today. Vehicles like the Nexus will use it in the future of tomorrow. We have Hillwood Properties in Alliance, Texas. I am so interested every time and excited every time I talk to Hillwood because in my career, I never had a chance to talk to real estate folks about why a helicopter should and shouldn't. We've been great partners with them for a long time. They use our product. But to think about the real estate play and bringing people together in a space like Alliance, Texas, to operate vehicles and to test Nexus and APT and move things for our customers and our communities is wonderful. The DFW airport's out there, right at the heart of the DFW Metroplex, and it'll be a key node in any future mobility system in the area. Microsoft, wow. So I know what you're saying when I said we're doing some software. You said, Bell, you don't know how to do software. And we're okay with that, but Microsoft does and we're collaborating with them in a way that has impressed me so much over the last year or so. I mean, they're leaning forward with us and showing us how to answer these hard questions of a technology system that is a vehicle, a physical infrastructure, and a digital infrastructure, all up in their Azure platform, not just the cloud, but the smart applications behind it. So thank you for that. Sumitomo, our Japanese partners, who want to bring this vision to life in Japan, not just for air taxi, unmanned logistics, but for it all. So we're partnering with them uh, in a way that is going to enable us to have the vehicle and these systems active in Japan. Yamato, you've heard about Yamato. We talked about them last year. They want to lead the world in unmanned logistics and they're um, you, already looking at the APT platform. We did a wonderful demonstration for them in Texas in August where we flew APT 70, a 300-pound drone, autonomously on one of their simulated missions. It was beautiful. 
And then finally, one that's close to um, all of our hearts is the Southwest Transplant Alliance. These are folks that do organ transplant work in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. And they've asked if we could move organs or organic matter for them, this time-sensitive material that saves lives. And AB70 is going to be a great platform for that. We're so happy to have them as a partner. And we'll see about other connectivity that they need as well. So thank you for being with us. This is about us standing together. This technology, like I said, the infrastructure, digital and physical, and the vehicle is powerful on a large scale only if it's accessible to a large population. So Bell is committed to bringing on-demand mobility to teachers, construction workers, and retail clerks. We are really dedicated to that mission because it just won't work without that scale. When we think about how those folks get to a city like this, you can imagine working together. Yesterday at one of my panels, um, somebody gave me a nice compliment after I was done and said, you just created a movement because you called on everyone in the, in the audience to, to get together and inform each other about what we're doing. So let, let's do that again today. Let's be committed together to on-demand mobility. When you go home, talk to your neighbors. When you go home, talk to your community representatives, your larger government representatives, and tell them the story about how you saw an advanced technology at CES 2020 from Bell that's going to change your life. And when we're standing there with you, bringing safe, accessible, and sustainable technology, we'll then create all of the federal, state, local, regulatory pieces alongside of you who ultimately own those, uh, those things in your community. Okay, so make sure you take this opportunity to interact with the team that I brought today from all of our partners and all of us at Bell. Check out the vehicle. Launch your Nexus out in the smart city. See how it flies around. And we will have a lot of fun at the rest of the show.